Okay. Thank you, Alejandro. Yes, we are indeed with Lenier Dominguez. Lenier, every time uh, I see you play against Shanklin, it's just this crazy theoretical battle. Did you expect that training for this game? Uh, not really. I wasn't expecting the line with D5. Uh, I thought Sam was playing mainly with D6 before this game. Uh, but it's, of course, a very direct line, very critical. I was trying to remember this uh, line that we played because this rook a8 is uh, pretty much uh, the best move in this position. And, and uh, uh, I, I was analyzing and I, I thought I had some line. I, I mean, I thought I, I looked at some line where uh, maybe in practice it, it was a bit tricky for, for black. I don't remember if it was bishop d2 what I played or not. I was uh, trying to remember during the game, but I, I, I don't know if this felt I like the first critical moment. Bishop to d2 or bishop to g5. Yeah, this I remember bishop d5 being uh, knight g4 uh, and and then uh, queen, queen, c2. queen c2, bishop c5 being being the one of the main lines. But uh, yeah, I remember that there were a couple of possible ways for white to play, and uh, and uh, yeah, bishop d2 seems seems like uh, like a possible option. Yeah, here I think. Uh, yeah, after 94. Were you at uh, at all concerned at this point? Because he was just blitzing out his moves. He had one hour and 35 minutes at some point, and you only had one hour and 20 minutes. It felt like you were the one that were surprised in uh, this game. Yeah, no, as I said, I, I knew the line. Uh, that That's why I wasn't like overly concerned. I know that uh, White is uh, not lost yet, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, uh, obviously he, he knew the line well. And um, that's why I didn't want to go for bishop g5, because I know it, it was supposed to be the main line. I was trying to find something else. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, this uh, after bishop d2, knight g4, it's very logical. Queen f1 and this knight e3, it's, uh, it's probably OK for black. I know that knight takes h2 and rook e5, or even rook e5 immediately. It's, uh, Should make a draw, yeah. It's a draw by force, but uh, it's maybe less obvious if you are, let's yeah. say, Playing over the board, uh, but yeah, after knight e3 takes takes knight g5, uh, queen takes takes on f2, and this queen e7 is an important move because if you play rook e7, rook f1, then it's a little bit unpleasant. Uh, but uh, but after queen e7, unfortunately, I didn't see much because just I mean, if rook f1. Uh, Black can play queen e4, but also f6. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very and simple. At, at this yeah. point, you did understand that bishop takes f7 just forces a draw. Right. That was a big decision. Uh, did you consider other moves such as rook to d1, rook to f1, try to keep the game going? And how did you uh, decide on bishop takes f7 and pretty much kill the game? Yeah, I thought that uh, black is uh, doing really well. Like in, in the long term, it can be uh, dangerous, for, dangerous for white because uh, three pawns. I mean, if we were to trade queens or something, then I definitely would take black. And uh, uh, then also, if I try to keep the queens, my king is always, I mean, he will always get counterplay with queen e4 check. So I don't really believe that uh, I had anything at this point. That's why I went for, for bishop takes f7. And I think it objectively, it's probably the, the, the best correct decision. decision. Yeah. Lenier, thank you very much. And uh, good luck in tomorrow's game. You're playing the black pieces. How are you going to approach that game? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, just uh, just normal. I mean, clearly tomorrow it's a much more important day than, than today. We'll decide the match. But uh, yeah, uh, just uh, uh, looking forward to not only the game of tomorrow, but just the rest of the tournament. Looking forward to seeing you in action. Good luck and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good luck, Lanier. Okay. And here.